Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are back with more Mr. Ballin, and I've seen that from what I've seen on stuff on my videos that you guys do enjoy more of these uh, night in the woods or woods or hiking, camping things stories from Mr. Ballin, and now we are back with more another one, but today it looks like it's probably only one story this time. As the title says, it is the most terrifying night in the woods story he has ever told, which means it's going to be good. Let's Today's story it. is a classic scary cabin in the forest story, but with a very big plot twist at the end. But before we get into that story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do and we upload once a week. So if that's of interest to you, the next time the like button is looking to adopt a pet, Tell them you just rescued a puppy and you'd love for them to adopt it. And when they say yes, go ahead and drop your puppy off, but don't tell them that your puppy is actually a hangry saltwater crocodile. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into today's story. A good one, hopefully. Who's out there? On the night of October 17, 2019, a 47-year-old woman named Ada Quintal stepped out of her family's cabin in rural Michigan to take her dog for a walk and have a smoke. It was very late. It was about 1.30 in the morning. Now, this cabin where she was staying was very isolated. It was about a half mile away from any neighbors, but Ada actually <laughs> enjoyed the solitude. You know, she was surrounded on all sides by forest and swamps, and the wilderness actually made Ada feel a lot safer than when she was back home in the densely populated Detroit area where she lived full time. And this was because just a few months earlier when she had been back home in Detroit, she had been the victim of an unprovoked attack. She had been out in the city around all these people in broad daylight, and this guy came up to her and just jumped her, broke her nose, gave her a concussion, and then ran off. But the scariest part of this attack was no, not the anything. fact that she had been brutalized. It was that this guy did not appear to have any reason to attack her. Uh. He didn't know Ada, and Ada had not been robbed or anything. That's it was like he just randomly identified her and attacked her. And the guy had never been caught. And so this ordeal had had such a profound him. impact on Ada that it really began to affect her health, both mentally and physically. She started to just kind of decline. Yeah, and on that, top of that, she had been laid off from her engineering job. And so now she was unemployed and seriously sometimes. depressed. And so recently, when Ada's uncle had called her and offered to pay world, her to come out and live in this two-story family cabin and fix it up for the winter, Ada had jumped at the chance. I mean, not only would this solve her unemployment issue, but also, she loved this cabin. It had been in her family for 75 years, and some of her fondest childhood memories were in this cabin. And so she looked at this as a chance to kind of get away from the city and just be in her happy place and kind of reset and recover from the trauma of the attack. And so for the past week, Ada and her boyfriend had been staying in this cabin and doing small repairs and cleaning it up. But two days earlier, her boyfriend had had to leave and go back to the city where they were actually fixing up another property, a condo. And so now it was just Ada and her dog. But that was totally fine with Ada. She liked being out here by herself, so this was no big deal. But tonight, she was feeling frustrated because she couldn't sleep. About an hour earlier, she had taken a pill to help her sleep, but so far it hadn't worked. And so she was feeling kind of wired and anxious. And so she had decided to go on a walk with her dog in hopes that that would clear her mind and allow her to finally get some rest. Now, these roads that surrounded this cabin were kind of small and zigzaggy and, you know, there weren't any street lights. I mean, this is not exactly a good place to go for a nighttime walk, but Ada knew this place like the back of her hand, and she also carried a 9mm pistol in her pocket, you know, just for protection. And so after well, walking for a few minutes down like one of these dark, protection. winding roads, Ada's dog stopped to relieve himself in the bush. Like so as the dog was going to the at. bathroom, Ada just casually smoked and waited. But at some point, the dog just stopped going to the bathroom turned slightly and began growling and its ears perked up and it was looking off into the darkness right ahead of them. And so Ada instinctively took her flashlight and raised it up and aimed it in the direction her dog was looking. And right away, the cone of light illuminated these two eyes looking right back at Ada. And immediately Ada knew what she was staring at. It was a mountain lion. And so doing her best to stay calm, Ada That's slowly reached into her pocket to pull Get out her gun. gun. But before pulling it out, the two eyes blinked shut, and then she heard it kind of turn and run off into the forest. It was gone. 
Once Ada was sure the mountain lion really was gone, she breathed a sigh of relief and then very quickly tugged on her dog's leash. They turned around and she hustled back towards the cabin. When Ada reached her cabin, which was all lit up because she had left all the lights on before she had left, she jumped up the front steps, she opened up the door, she went inside with her dog, and after letting her dog off the leash, she shut and locked the door. Then she grabbed her phone and texted her boyfriend to tell him about this mountain lion. And then after hitting send, you know, Ada felt relieved to be back in her cabin, but at the same time, she still felt very on edge. I mean, she had been, you know, just a few feet face away from the mountain lion in basically. the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere. There's but as Ada was doing her best you. to calm herself down, she heard this noise coming from outside the living room window, almost like twig snapping, like somebody was walking past the window. And so the way this cabin was set up is when you first walked inside, you were in the kitchen, and then the back half of the cabin was a living room, and then there were also stairs leading up to a second floor. But from in the kitchen, you had a clear line of sight into the living room and vice versa. It was kind of like one big room with two functions. Hmm. And so from where Ada was standing in the kitchen, she could clearly see the window in the living room where this noise had kind of come through. But because the inside of the cabin was all lit up and the outside was dark, you know, from her you perspective, really all she could there. see was a reflection yeah, on that reflection. window. So to look outside that window to see what had made that noise she would need to get right up next to the window. Right so feeling pretty window. nervous at this point, she walked across the cabin, she made her way towards this window, and then she pressed her face right up against the glass to look outside. But all she saw outside was just darkness. I mean, there was nothing out there. And so maybe Ada stepped back from the window and started to wonder if maybe the sound she had just heard was maybe that mountain lion. You know, or maybe it could just be a random animal. Here. You know, that was terrifying, but at least she was inside. But also she was thinking to herself, you know, mountain lions are not known for being aggressive towards humans and they wouldn't come up to her cabin like this and prowl around outside. That's just not what mountain lions do. But Ada didn't really have any other explanation. And so she told herself, you know, it's gotta be nothing. You know, there's nothing out there. This is a safe place. And so she kind of forgot about the noise and she took off her coat and put her stuff down. And then she sat down on the couch in the living room, turned on the TV and tried to relax. But only about 20 minutes later, when Ada had finally oh, relaxed and was even thinking about getting into her bed and going to sleep, she heard another noise coming from that same window in the living room. And this time when she looked up and looked out that window, despite the there. reflections inside the cabin, she could clearly tell there was something moving outside of her cabin. And it was definitely not a mountain lion. It looked like a man. And so Ada had to stifle a, a scream man, and then instinctively she lunged for her gun on the coffee table and then darted behind the couch and crouched down to make sure whoever was out there couldn't Can't see her. her. And then, you know, with gun in hand, she began calling out to the person out there that, hey, I'm armed. If you come in here, I'm going to shoot you. But it was just silence. And then Ada strained her ears to try to hear any sound that would give away where this person went. You know, were they still outside that window? Had they moved somewhere else? But all she could hear was the sound of the wind whipping outside and an owl hooting off in the distance. But then, right as Ada was starting to wonder, you know, did I really see somebody out there? You know, is this all in my head? That's when she heard the distinct sound of footsteps on her front porch. And so again, Ada had to stifle a scream and she darted to the other side of the couch, you know, preventing the person from the front of the house to seeing her now. Then she grabbed her phone and she was dialing 911 and she was about to hit call when she stopped herself. And she began to wonder, am I just totally overreacting here? Even you know, I don't know if there's somebody out there. I could be hearing this. Or maybe it's just like an animal or something. And also, and deep down, Ada knew that ever since that attack in Detroit that summer, that basically everything scared her. And she was starting to wonder if maybe she was just being totally paranoid and there was nothing going on. And she didn't want to embarrass herself by calling 911 and having them come out here and finding nothing. And so Ada decided she would call her boyfriend. And so she called her boyfriend. And as the phone is ringing, she's listening intently for any other footsteps outside, but she can't hear anything. And then her boyfriend, you know, he didn't pick up. It's also like 2.30 in the morning at this point, but her boyfriend doesn't answer. And so after that, she tries calling one of her friends and her friend does pick up. And right away, Ada just began telling this friend about all the things that had happened that night, you know, from going out and seeing the mountain lion and then coming back in, hearing the sound and now hearing the footsteps on the front porch. And, you know, she was worried that maybe she was just making it all up, but she was still really scared. And even though Ada was trying to be composed as she was telling her friend, her voice began to crack and she began to cry because she really was scared. And the friend just said, look, I'm going to call the police on your behalf. You know, it seems like it's worth having them come out just to make sure you're really OK give me the address and I'll tell them where to go. And so Ada would give her friend the address, but she told the friend, you know, thank you, but do not call right now. Just please stay on the phone for a minute and let me just do a quick investigation. Let me look out the windows, you know, and just really make sure that this is nothing before you call the police. 
And so the friend said, you know, okay, you know, look around, but then I'm calling the police. And so with her phone and her gun in hand, Ada very carefully crept out from behind the couch, keeping a low profile, you know, staying below the sight line of all the windows. And she crept from the living room into the kitchen towards the front of the house. And she walked over to the sink and she very slowly raised her head until she could just barely peek through the window right above the sink that overlooked the front porch. Because remember, that was the last place she had heard sounds from the front porch. And so she very carefully peeks and looks out the window and there's nothing there. Nobody's on the porch. It's just empty, dark forest. She's safe. Ada let out a relieved half cry, half laugh, and then stood all the way up and felt totally ridiculous because clearly she had just imagined, you know, all these people wandering around the outside of her house. And so she was about to tell her friend that, hey, sorry, you know, there is no issue here. Don't call the police. But before she could get the words out, Ada happened to turn around and was looking back towards the living room and she froze because there in that same window she had heard those sounds coming was from in the, the living person? room was I now mean, the silhouettes of two men, two clear men. as day, just looking at the window one? right at Ada. And so acting purely on instinct, Ada just raised her gun and aimed it at these two men. And to her horror, the two men also raised guns and aimed them right back at Ada. And so Ada just started firing her gun at the window and these men began shooting back at her. And right before Ada leapt to the ground, she was pretty sure she hit one of the men in the head with one of her rounds. And so she lands on the ground. It's absolute pandemonium at this point. Then her friend who's still on the phone is screaming like, what's going on, what's going on? And all Ada could think to do was yell out, there's two men, they're shooting at me. I think I shot one of them. And the friend is screaming, I'm gonna call the police. And then the line goes dead. And Ada, who's crouched down behind the kitchen island at this point, she realizes all the shooting has stopped. It's now dead silent in the cabin. And so for a second, Ada was thinking to herself, maybe I managed to shoot both of them. And that's why it's quiet right now. What if it's just like a mirage type of thing where it's just mimicking what you're doing? I don't have a feeling it's something like that. But then another thought began to enter her head that maybe she had only shot one of them and the other survivor was moving into position to maybe ambush her. And so as she's running through what she's gonna do, she hears this horrible loud thumping sound right above her in the get second to the floor top of the, of the house. Now Ada knew at this moment, she should just get her dog and run. Because if this second shooter has survived and has now come into her cabin and is oh, upstairs, the cabin? that upstairs? means the forest How is now up clear there? and she can make a run for it. But as she sat there by the island, still clutching her gun, you know, in this beloved family cabin of hers, she began thinking about the fact that ever since that attack in Detroit over the summer, you know, that had totally wrecked her life and made her scared of everything. And so as she heard the sound of whoever this was marching around in her second floor, she made a decision. She was gonna stand her ground and fight. And so she took a deep breath, she stood up, and with gun in hand, she made her way to the stairs and began to go up. She's very brave, I can say that. Not sure if most people would be able to do that. It's who and you to the Tron Q again and you arrived changing the world. Thank you so much, and now back to the story. The police arrived at the cabin about 30 minutes later because Ada's friend did call the police and she warned them that as far as she knew, there could be at least two gunmen there and maybe Ada had shot one of them, she wasn't sure. And so when the police arrived, they showed up, you know, guns drawn and they walked up to the cabin and they searched the outside, but there was nobody out there, it was silent. And then when they made entry into the cabin, they saw clearly there had been a shootout. I mean, there were bullet holes all over the place, broken windows, but after searching the what cabin top to bottom, they didn't gun. find anybody. No Ada, Not no shooters. However, they did find Ada's terrified dog inside of the cabin, oh, no. and the dog would be just fine. Now, once the cabin was secured of any threats, the police would do another comprehensive search looking for any evidence that would kind of tell them, you know, did where Ada, Ada or these shooters had gone. And during this secondary search, they would find Ada's shoes and her cell phone on the roof of the cabin, and they would also find her gun on the ground, not far from the roof, suggesting maybe she had fallen off the roof or jumped from the roof, but they were kind of located roughly in the same area. And during this secondary search, they wouldn't find Ada or the gunman, but they would find Ada's cell phone and her shoes on the roof of the cabin, and they would also find Ada's gun on the ground, not far from where her shoes and cell phone had been found. But that was it. 
Police immediately launched a massive search That's in the weird. forest surrounding the cabin, but despite looking all over the place, they could not find any signs of Ada or an attackers. Police checked local hospitals to see if maybe the man that Ada had shot had shown up seeking medical attention, but as far as they could tell, he hadn't. And so pretty quickly, the police theorized that maybe there were no gunmen. You know, maybe what really happened here is Ada's boyfriend attacked her, and he was responsible for whatever happened to her. But when police checked on Ada's boyfriend, it would turn out he work. had a rock-solid alibi. He had been with Ada's adult son at the time Ada had gone missing. And Ada's own son said, yes, for sure, he was with me. He did not do this. But after that, the police thought, okay, well, maybe if Ada's boyfriend didn't do this, maybe he hired other people to hurt Ada. But there was no evidence of any strange financial transactions. And as far as they could tell when they did some digging, there was no strife in Ada and her boyfriend's relationship. So there was no clear reason why he would want to hurt her. And so that lead also kind of fell flat. Police would confirm that Ada was attacked that previous summer by this random guy in Detroit. And so for a little while, they speculated that, you know, maybe this guy, this attacker who had never been caught, had maybe tracked Ada down to finish off the job. But that seemed That's so far-fetched and just not likely like, that that opinion. basically was shut down as well. I don't and think as the days possible. passed, the evidence that was coming in only made the case more confusing. For example, there were all these bullets fired during this big shootout in the cabin, and when they examined the one actual bullets the house? they extracted from the walls and the floor and the ceiling, they were all from Ada's gun. Yeah. However, outside and inside the cabin, There's they no found bullets? all these different shell casings, suggesting that those bullets had been fired from different weapons, i.e., you know, maybe the attacker's weapons. And so as the weeks passed by and Ada mm -hmm. and her attackers were not found, people began to speculate that, you know, maybe this was all an elaborate setup by Ada just so she could disappear. Or other people thought maybe she was abducted by aliens. I mean, there were lots of theories surrounding this, but basically nobody knew what happened. And then pretty soon, the case just went completely cold. That is, until December 21st, 2019, so about two months after Ada's five disappearance. And on that day, Ada's family decided to drain a pond ago. that was near that cabin in the is woods. She be inside that At pond? this point, the family was drown, so desperate drown. for closure that they were prepared to do just about she anything to, to find her Ada body and figure out what pond? happened to her. And so even though this pond had previously been searched by the police, they drained this pond, and sure enough, they that find Ada. Is. She was deceased, and her body was found about 300 yards away from the cabin, and she was covered in only about a foot of water. Now, initially, the speculation was, well, here you go. You know, she must have been chased out of her cabin by these attackers, and she was shot and killed, and this is where she fell. But after a quick examination of her body, it was clear she had no bullet wounds on her anywhere. In fact, she didn't even have any bruises on her or any major scrapes or cuts or anything, so it didn't even seem like she had been in any sort of physical struggle at all before she died. In fact, unless she had drowned, it really just seemed totally unclear how she had died. It was not until the medical examiner did Ada's autopsy that all this baffling evidence began to make sense. It would turn out, in the wake of that horrible random attack that Ada had suffered over the summer, that Ada was actually doing far worse than she let on to her family and friends. She yeah, but maybe her mind, maybe her mind out of anxiety just made all, all of the, what happened, what just happened with two guys and all of that stuff up after, after just maybe the mountain lion and after being anxious, after that anxiety went up high enough, it just happened like that and then, I think, goes... With goes on until and anxiety she somehow and substance abuse. Ends up and so on the night that she had died, she was likely feeling bond. totally stressed out and anxious, and she couldn't sleep as a result. And so she had taken some Valium, which is a fairly strong sedative, some and also some anti anxiety medication. But after taking those pills, she still wasn't tired. And so that was when she decided to, you know, go out for a walk with her dog to clear her head and have a smoke. But it was not cigarettes that she was smoking. She was smoking methamphetamine, mm -hmm. known simply as meth. And meth is a very strong stimulant yeah, that people like because it makes them feel very strong and confident and alert, which for Ada was a powerful antidote to the helplessness she was feeling all the time from the attack she had suffered that summer. But one of the many downsides of meth That's what I'm is that it can make you extremely paranoid. And so during her walk that night, as she's smoking meth, she sees a mountain lion, which terrifies her. And then after the mountain lion trots off, it was like that jolt of adrenaline and fear from seeing the mountain lion didn't subside because of smoking meth. It was like the meth sent her into this paranoia overdrive that she couldn't escape from. And so when Ada went back inside of her cabin, she very likely did see people in her windows. 
but almost certainly it was just her own reflection. But again, she's in this meth-induced paranoid state. And so instead of realizing it was her own reflection, she thought it was like intruders coming to get her. And before long, she'd raised her gun and- How do you explain the two? How do you explain two? Reflection side by side, technically. I'm not sure. Thought the people outside were raising their gun back at her. Yeah, that's again. what I was. That's kind of what I said, where it was just her. Somewhat, except I'm not right thinking that it was just. I don't know. Yeah, just her reflection. Just her reflection, and so when she was shooting, she was basically time. having a shootout with herself. And yeah. then as for, you know, the strange noises she was hearing, like the footsteps on the second floor, one? very likely those were just natural sounds kind of happening outside. She's out in the middle of a forest. There's lots of noises that are totally natural at night. But again, you know, she's in this paranoid state. And so she went upstairs to confront the person and then didn't see anybody. And then police theorized that she must have, you know, climbed out onto the roof to hide from these attackers. And then at some point, for reasons unknown, she leapt from the roof or climbed down or something, leaving behind her cell phone and shoes on the roof. She left her gun on the ground. And then she ran off into the forest where she ultimately collapsed, you know, 300 yards away in a foot of water. Did she fall she died, unconscious? Not from drowning, but from a combination of hypothermia oh. and also a toxic combination of drugs in her system. Yeah. And so in the end, the danger that Ada was trying to escape was in her own mind. The mind's a terrifying place. Before I became a professional... The mind's a very terrifying place. I could put you in bad situations just as an example. This story is an example, perfect example of what can happen if your mind's not in great place. You can die, you cannot have good uh, uh, future endeavors, especially when you try to take stuff like meth just to help you get over it, which is not a great idea. Don't do that. But I did hope you guys enjoyed, and if you guys did, remember to like the video show show how much you guys enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you guys like my content and want to keep continuing to see more and also hit the notification bell so you guys never miss when i upload at least every week or so maybe a few days over a week but depends on what's going on and i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys in the next video this might be from just gonna spoil it i want to do i want i'm wanting to do a fnaf video a fnaf a fan game video later at some point during this month so us you'll see when it comes out hope you guys enjoyed see you